Nobody realizes just how difficult a task it is to go to prison and to get out and still maintain some type of consistent sanity. They don't realize how hard that is. I remember walking out of the detention center and raising my hand to God in thanks. I didn't have any family. At that time, I didn't know where my son or my ex-wife or my daughter were. I said to myself, I've been missing out on a lot of life, a lot of life. When I got locked up, my children were two and four years old, and that was the last time I seen them for almost 47 years. As I look back now, that's probably the most terrible experience that I had was the fact that I was separated from my children. Oh, there it is. This set here, I've had since 1990. I've created over 400 paintings with just this one watercolor set. In terms of my art, I started using that as a way of filling in the time. It was keeping me from worrying about the fact that I had lost so much. My subject matter dealt a lot with trying to transpose my mind out beyond the fence, out beyond the wall. The artwork is what really kept me alive. The ultimate witness in my case was the one that actually committed the crime. And these people gave me life without parole, which meant that I would die in prison for something that I didn't do. And so year after year after year keep going by, and I kept getting more and more discouraged. But still, I never gave that hope up. Almost 40-something years later, the guy that actually is involved in the crime admitted that he was in the crime and said emphatically that I was not there and that he didn't even know me. And that's what started the process of me getting out of prison. But I miss you most of all, my darling, when autumn Start to fall. We have not exonerated the majority of people who were falsely convicted. The number that we see is just the tip of the iceberg. There's really good reason to think there's a lot more people out there who are innocent and have been in prison or are in prison and are yet to be exonerated or may never be exonerated. When did the new evidence of innocence first come to light? So we have a randomized sample of 400 cases. It's an incredibly complicated process to become exonerated of a crime. There's a lot of luck involved, and, and, and that's really unfortunate. I think what's really remarkable about Richard Phillips is the fact that he kept going for as long as he did. When I got out, I also had to learn how to deal with being free and being back in society again. Going in the grocery store, I don't know how to shop. It had been almost 50 years since I drove. A lot of the streets had changed, all those little small things there. But I had to adjust. It's either that or perish. We're all going to go through problems in our life. Everybody's going to have ups and downs. It's not so much the storms that you have to go through, it's whether or not you can dance in the rain. If I can do that, it won't be such a total loss. 